What's up guys, Josh with Metal in Motion. Today I'm working on this LA-110 John Deere and it's blowing the 20 amp fuse, which means it has a short circuit somewhere in the wiring harness. And I'm gonna show you how to find it. All right, so what is a short circuit? Well, I'm gonna give you a very simplified version of what a short circuit is. So we're gonna go back to class. Get out of the way of that light there. So we've got a battery. We've got our positive side. Our negative side our negative side is also bolted to the lawnmower frame and maybe the engine most likely and the positive side is going to go through a fuse some other switches and stuff like that this is the simplified version but it's going to go through a fuse it's going to come up to a light bulb light bulb is going to use a certain amount of juice it's going to come back to the negative side of the battery say you have a hot wire and it's rubbing against the side of the engine and it finally breaks through the insulation and the bare wire touches the engine block now you have a straight path from positive to negative, and this, if it wasn't for the fuse being a certain size, would smoke the wires, and it creates a short circuit. This would be the long circuit, not really, but this would be the short circuit. It creates a shorter path than what it was intended for. You get it. I'm gonna spill the beans on this one because I know where the problem is for this mower. And it's a very touchy problem. And there is something to remember when you're dealing with short circuits and that's don't go wiggling wires and tugging and pulling on stuff because the whole reason you have a short circuit can be the reason is that a wire has vibrated against a metal object until it's touched the bare wire inside. And if you go wiggling something around, you can temporarily move that wire off of it and you'll never find the problem again because maybe it won't act up and maybe one day five months down the road when your grass is three feet tall and you got to get your yard mode, it's going to blow. It's going to touch the thing and you're going to be trying to figure out where the problem is. So leave everything where it's at and very carefully and methodically go through this. So here's our 20 amp fuse. Check that it's blown going to be obvious it's blown in this case it's clearly blown there's no center in it you could hook your little continuity tester up to it double check it i can show that in another video if you guys want very simple um so i've got some tools what do i use the one tool that you can purchase is this little guy and this is a resettable circuit breaker this is a busman 711540 it's a 15 amp 12 volt fuse but it resets itself. It gets hot and it opens up and it, as it opens up, it cools down and it closes and then it gets hot and it opens up and it just keeps doing that. Get out of here. And so we're gonna plug this in and immediately it will start clicking. Okay, so with that thing plugged in, it's going to keep clicking on and off, on and off, on and off. And you're going to be able to start going around and very carefully disconnecting some pigtails and some connectors until that stops clicking. When that stops clicking, whatever the last thing was that you just disconnected, it's going to be on that circuit. So you need to start narrowing down the wires. If you've got you know, a handful of wires in that pigtail, try to touch, you know, unplug it and touch one set of wires together with a piece of, you know, paper clip or something. And go to the next set of wires, the next set, until it starts clicking again. When it starts clicking again, that means you've tripped the fuse and uh, there's current flowing through it. And that's gonna be the wire that your problem is on. Now it could be uh, a spot in the wire that's bare, or it could be a component that's on that that's shorted out. So. This is the cheapest and easiest way to do it. These are, you know, I don't know, 10, eight, 10 bucks at O'Reilly's or Napa. I've got something a little more visual for you guys that I made that I wanna show you and it'll be better for the camera. And that's this guy right here. Uh, this thing is simply a peanut bulb with a buzzer in the middle. I'm gonna shoot a video on this to show you guys how I made it because it's really useful. The buzzer, has a polarity to it. So if I put the positive and the negative in the correct place, the buzzer and the light will come on if there's a short. If I put the positive and negative opposite from what I just did, the light will work, 
but the buzzer will not. So it just depends on what you need. If you're working in a car and you're working on the other end under the hood, you want the buzzer so you can hear it when you disconnect a connector and the short goes away. So what we do is we're gonna plug this directly into the fuse. I'll show you the buzzer part here. It'll be nice and loud. There you go. Sometimes I'll put this cap on to quiet it down, just like so. Um, I don't need the buzzer for this, so we're gonna take this out. I'm gonna put the red on the left side this time, black on the right side. And if that'll stay in there, I'll prop this up. And you guys can see, and we'll leave it off. You guys can see the light. Okay, from here, what we wanna do is we wanna start disconnecting pigtails. We're trying to isolate, is this something on the mower or is this something on the engine? The easiest way is this pigtail bunch right here. This is a very simple lawnmower. It doesn't have a lot of stuff on it. This right here is gonna isolate everything on the engine from the mower. If I unplug this and the light goes out, I know it's on the engine. And so very carefully, she goes out. If I plug her up, she comes back on. Okay, so we know that it's something on the engine. However, there are four wires coming out of this pigtail. So what I can do is this one's got a connector on it. So I can plug this back up and I can disconnect this pigtail. Oop, plug it back up here. I'm trying to do it easy so I don't have to move everything around. So this is connected. So these two wires are disconnected and uh, that leaves these two wires here. So the easiest way would be to separate this. I've got just a simple piece of steel. You can use a paper clip or something. And I'm gonna touch one of these wires at a time. We got a black wire. And I'm gonna go black to where the black went on here. I get nothing. If I go to the gray wire, to where the gray wire goes, Paperclip would be a lot better. All right, so we know the problem is on the gray wire. So what I need to do is chase the gray wire down. Sorry, it fell out. Chase the gray wire down and see what's on that gray wire. So we still have the short. If I were to unplug this solenoid and the light were to go out, that means the solenoid, solenoid is what's shorting out the circuit. It's not. So that means that the issue is between this loose connector and that gray wire on that big connector on the other side. So let's start following this wire back. Keep our light in there. There's only so many places it can be. So start inspecting this wire. As I come around the corner here, notice this up against the starter. And what does it have? A bear spot, a bear spot that has been pulled too tight and rubbing against the sharp bottom corner of that starter until it chafed a hole right through the insulation and blew the fuse. This goes back to why it's not good to start wiggling wires and moving stuff around because if this was rest up against there and you moved it off, you would never find it again until one day, maybe that just touches right there, you can see. It would take just a certain, touching it just a certain way. There you go. See that? So there's our problem. Couple tools, couple easy things you guys can buy. Mostly this, this makes a noise. And you can do the same thing. Um, you can do a peanut bulb, a simple version where you take a, a simple peanut bulb and put two wires to it and stick a wire on the left side of the the fuse and stick one on the right side of the fuse. And if you've got a short and active one, uh, power it up. You'll need to turn your key on so you get juice actually flowing through the system. And uh, it should light up that peanut bulb and you can do the very same thing. That's essentially what this is with the exception of adding the buzzer. All right, guys, that's all I've got for today. I know it was a simple repair, but the principles are the same. Uh, go get yourself one of those little Bustman circuit breakers. Uh, or maybe even a little test light. And very carefully, you could put it on either side of that fuse holder, get the light to light up, uh, start disconnecting some of those connectors, but disconnect them carefully. Don't go tugging and pulling on that whole wiring harness. 
because if there's a chafed wire and you go moving it, you may never find it again, uh, but one day it will find you. So uh, the second principle is try to isolate the system. Try to figure out if you got big pigtails, disconnect a big pigtail first to try to isolate something from the mower versus the engine. And then once you figure out it's on the engine, start isolating the wires that's in that pigtail one by one and just narrow it down. You guys will figure it out. Let me know if there's something I missed or if there's a better way of doing it. In the meantime, I'm Josh with Metal Emotion. We'll catch you guys next time.